Okay, in this video I'm going to show how to do three simple writing tasks with FME 2012. First I'm going to show how to write arbitrary XML, then I'm going to show how to write arbitrary GML, and then I'm going to show how to write simple GML using the XML templater. So first, how to write arbitrary XML. This is for the case where you might be given the requirement that you need to write XML, but there's no schema, there's just this requirement you got to produce XML. So here we go. So I'm going to point at the file, in this case it's a MidMIF file, and I'm going to say um, open workbench, and I'm simply going to specify that I want to write to XML. First I'm going to pick both files to simulate multiple tables. Okay, so this could, and again, the source could be absolutely anything FME reads and writes. So I'm doing nothing here that is special for MidMIF. So now I'll pick an output data set. Okay, there we go. And uh, FME is going to whir away here. And it's going to generate, uh, I want both feature types. So two seconds later, boom, I have that. Now to write these, I simply run. And while that's running, I'm going to go over to the output data set here. And um, you're going to see it gives you a number of things. That took 2.9 seconds. It gave us an arbitrary XML document, which of course I can open in IE. And you can see it there. Okay. You'll notice that it has two tables it has a hydrographic line table, and it has a floodplains table. Okay. So they were both there, and that's it. And now it took the attributes from the input table. It also created a schema document for us. So if anybody wanted to know what you wanted to write, you also had that. So that is how easy it is to write arbitrary XML with FME. Okay, so how about writing arbitrary GML? So now I'm going to talk about writing arbitrary GML with F F F FME, and you'll find that it is exactly the same process. Again, you specify your input data files, so I'm going to pick them both, okay, or as many tables as you want. I'm going to this time, I'm just going to say GML, okay, um, and again here, I'm going to go to writing arbitrary GML. I'm going to pick the output. Let's get rid of these again, okay, yes, and delete, okay, yes, and um, we're going to write arbitrary, in this case, let's call it GML. Okay, and again, the uh, the extension could be anything. Um, let's pick GML 3.2.1, and we will leave the rest the same. And again, it's going to whir away. It's going to generate the schema document for me. I'm going to take both tables, and now we're ready to run. And I run that, and I go to the output, and you're going to see that I have in fact an SSD, a GML document, an XF map document. Now because this is GML, I'm going to open this with the Universal Viewer, and we should see because it's GML that it in fact has geometry and attribution. Okay, so look it up, and there you go. There's a geometry. You can see some of the the attributes there: FIPS, you know, Cobra, whatever. Same on the water here, categories, hydrography, intermediate, and so on and so on. So it actually absolutely um, pulled those in and uh, read those properly. So that's the first two types. Okay, for the last type, um, you know, what if I do want to generate a, some arbitrary um, XML, but I don't want uh, this sort of generated type? So I'll do that now. So we don't need to save any of this. Okay, so now. What I'm going to do is go into XML demos here, and we're writing, and we're writing generation simple. And so what I have here is I have a CSV file, okay? And what I want to do is I want to write these man of manholes. I want to write these manholes in a very simple XML style. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read this as a CSV file. So I open this with Workbench. And in this case, since I'm doing the formatting of the XML and the building of the XML within my workspace, I'm just going to write it out as a text file, okay, like that. And let's look at the CSV file, okay, the file does have the field names on the first line, so I do that, okay. And we're going out to text file, so that's going to be all this. These are not connected because they don't share um, any schema. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our friend the XML templater, okay to generate a, uh, a manhole list XML document. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to, the root element is just going to look like this. It's going to be uh, 
So again, I could import this from a file, but here, for sake of uh, what I'm going to do is I'm saying at the highest level, I just want a, a file called has manholes. Then inside there is going to be the the actual manholes themselves. So that's that one. I'm going to add a sub template, okay? Because for each level of nesting, I need a sub template. So here, I'm going to call this sub one manhole, and here, I'm going to type um, at the highest level. I'm going to go like this manhole and of course make sure my nesting is all right like that and now I'm going to grab let's grab an identifier ID which will surround with a slash ID tag okay I also want to know the um, the status okay so we're gonna grab that okay and I also want to know the the owner now for sake of time I'm going to keep this uh, really short. So now, okay, for the ID, I'm going to drag the ID, put that there. I'm going to grab the status and put that here. And I'm going to grab the owner and put that there. Okay, now, I don't need to do this, but um, I like things like this. So I'm going to go like this. Okay, like that. And um, there we go. Now, oh, back up here now, I want the manholes to be in there. And so now, I actually have the sub-template for manhole. So I can simply drag that there. And now what it's going to do is it's going to take all the features that go through this manhole and generate them and then put them into this other document. So I'll go like this. And that is done. The output is in result attribute. Fine. And um, this one I actually is a manhole. So I actually want it to go there. The root, I don't need anything, um, but I want it needs a, a feature to go in just to trigger things off. So I go like that, telling FME, hey, um, there you go. So it's going to fire off. Now I want to make sure this is valid. So we have the XML, XML validator. So I'm going to put him down. And he's an attribute, and the attribute I have is slash result. Okay, like that. And um, there we go. And last but not least, I want to format it. XML formatter. Okay, on the pass like that. And then that guy's going to go like that. And um, XML formatter. We're just going to say pretty print attribute with text. And the attribute is, I think it's XML. No, it's result. And the output is going to be XML output. So then I open this up and XML output is going to go to whoops XML output is going to go to text line data so I'm going to grab XML output okay like this okay put it on text line data and now I run this and we're done we will have an XML document of manholes where the, the outer will be um, manholes and so we'll look at this we're going to the output manhole XML open it and you can see there was two manholes in there ID status owner ID status owner bracket and manholes just like that so this this templater is what is doing all the work of building these complex XML documents and then I just simply send that to the writer and away you go so that that's it that's the three ways of writing simple arbitrary XML documents in FME